Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Derek Elliott from Derek.com and today we're making this. It's a laptop. I'll walk you through the full process to create the keyboard, model the case, add some ports, do a little lighting, get that screen looking sweet, and end up with something ready to render, animate, or just delete forever off your PC. Let's go. All right, so we're gonna start off by doing the probably most tedious and annoying part of modeling this laptop, which is gonna be creating the keyboard. So I'm gonna do Shift A image and then I will add in a reference image. And then I have saved a um, sort of just a guide for myself. I'm mostly using this just for the lines to get the shape of the keys. Uh, you can use the same image as well. Just mind you, it doesn't have like arrow keys and things like that if you want that. Very simple layout, but it's gonna work just fine for the tutorial. But find a layout you like and use that. Um, you don't necessarily have to use the same image for the actual uh, letters texture, which I'll go through how I created that, but just something that has the general shape. So I'm gonna press Alt R to reset the rotation of that and Alt G to make sure it's centered. Um, I'll also put that image on screen here, full screen if you wanna just copy this exact layout. You can just take a screenshot, but there's plenty of images of this type of thing available online. Um, but what we're gonna do with this image is just uh, bring down the opacity on it so it's not quite so visible. And we're gonna use this just to create that general keyboard shape. And it should be pretty simple. Now, so that I don't accidentally select it, I'm gonna turn on my restriction toggle here so that I can not select it. And then I'm gonna press Shift A and add in a plane. And this will be our keyboard. So in my X-ray view, pressing Alt Z, I'm gonna scale this down in edit mode, by the way, and then just scale this out on the X axis just to get the full shape here. Um, and once we have that, we'll want to create edge loops for each of these rows. So I'm gonna press Control R to add an edge loop, and then I'm just gonna scroll up. And in the case of this particular keyboard, the rows are all the same height, so this works fine. Uh, you might need to go in and add like an additional edge loop or something if, if one of your rows is different, but uh, the process should be roughly the same. Um, so now with these edges selected, basically what I, do, what I wanna do is start kind of cutting the keys vertically. Now, if we do that now, it's just gonna make a line all the way down the middle. Uh, but you can see that these keys are kind of like offset, so that's not gonna work for us. Um, but we do know that we want the line through this way. So what I'm gonna do is select these edges and then I'll press V and that will rip them. So we basically now have separate faces. So these are all like not connected anymore, which is gonna work great for this next step, which is to go ahead and start adding those edge loops in. Now we're not gonna have to do it for every one of the keys, but we will do it for the odd shaped keys. So I'm gonna press Control R and slide one over where this backspace key is. Let's do the same thing here. And this can be kind of, tr kind of tricky to grab them, um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and add in the odd shaped keys here and just adding edge loops with Control R and just sliding those over sort of until we have the cut right where we want it. And I might just kind of do them all for this bottom row here. And once you have all the irregular shaped keys kind of mapped out there, um, we can hide this real quick if we wanted to kind of see what that looks like. But it looks like we've got them all mapped out pretty well there. Um, then what you're going to want to do is add in the cuts for all the non-irregular keys. Um, so the reason we did those last is because that we know we want those to all be the same size. So we can just scroll up when we do our control R to add loop cuts until we have the right number to kind of split that line up the rest of the way. So just again, control R, scroll up until you got a line everywhere it needs to be and repeat that process for each row of the keyboard. And just like that, we've got all the keys. Um, now these are still sort of like separate islands per row, but we want all the keys to be individual. Um, so what we're gonna do to complete that is just press I, and let's actually first go into face select mode here. I'm gonna press I to inset. And then if I press I one more time, it will change the mode to inset individual um, so that now you can see we have gaps, kind of even gaps between all the keys. Now we wanna just, you know, holding shift, make this a very subtle kind of indent. We want the keys to be pretty close together, but you know, do it to your liking. And then I'm gonna do that. And then with those all still selected, I'm gonna press control I and that will invert my selection. And then I'm just gonna press X and delete the faces. So now I basically have, if we hide our reference plane there, uh, we basically have all the key shapes and I might actually do that one more time. I made the gaps a little bit bigger than I wanted to. So let's just control B. Oops, sorry, that was an I. And then I wanna do it even smaller. You don't even really have to be able to see it cause we're not gonna be selecting them manually. Okay, and then control I, X, delete faces. Okay, that's a little bit tighter, looking a little bit nicer. Um, so we can go ahead and give this a little bit of dimension now. 
Um, I'll add in a solidify modifier, give it a little bit of thickness, and uh, so that we can see these edges a little bit better, why don't we turn on our cavity option here. Now maybe we do want the keys to be like a little bit rounded. We can add in a bevel modifier. We'll want to round it this way, but I'm also talking about the corners. Um, so we can actually drag this bevel before the solidify, set it to do the vertices, and then just pull this down until we have it kind of the size we want. Um, now I'm not working to an accurate scale right now just because it's going to make working with these modifiers a little bit easier as we go along, but uh, that's something we might address later. Maybe not. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but I'm going to add in one more bevel and pull this one down a little bit um, just until it's you know, kind of the way we like it. So yeah, our whole keyboard here is very, very long, not realistic size, but uh, we might just keep working with it like that to get started. But anyways, um, once you have this set up, you've got all your keys modeled, um, the tedious part is mostly over. Well, that's not true because now you need to actually make a texture to get mapped onto the specific layout that you just created. Um, so in my case, I have already done that, but I'm just going to open up that file and show you kind of how I did it uh, in case you want to do your own with your own logos, or maybe you have a different layout or you want to use a different font or something like that. Um, it's a pretty simple process. So let's go ahead and save this file and I'll open up that other one. Hey guys, it's me, Derek, and uh, I'm normally just hiding behind my microphone, but I thought I'd pop in. And if you're enjoying the laptop tutorial and seeing my face, then I thought you might also like my learning path that I created in collaboration with my friends at Skillshare. It's five total lessons and they are jam packed with knowledge to help you on your Blender journey. I know sometimes my tutorials can get a little wordy and lengthy, but the classes I have over on Skillshare are really great for moving you forward in that Blender journey, kind of holding your hand from the beginner levels to some more advanced topics like animation, materials, and lighting, all at your own pace. And another great part of taking the classes over on Skillshare is that there is a whole community of students who have already been following along. So rather than just going out alone, you can connect with other students, see what they're doing, and learn by doing. Since I'd be really lame if I only talked about myself, I also wanted to shout out this really cool class I found on bullet journaling by Dylan Merzwinski. And she kind of walks you through the process of getting a little bit more organized. Maybe you're like me, creative person who struggles a little bit with procrastination, staying organized. This class has been really good for me to start following along and see how I can kind of organize those thoughts in one place and get a little bit more out of my own potential. If you're interested in joining me and all the other students that are already following along, then boy, do I have the thing for you. Skillshare has kindly offered a link in the description. The first 500 people to click it are going to get a free full month long trial of Skillshare. Plenty of time for you to go check out my classes, other learning paths, or whatever else you might find. Skillshare has all types of content, whether you're a business professional, a freelancer just getting started, or a creative trying to pick up a new skill. Skillshare has it all. So just wanted to talk about that real briefly, but uh, thanks for being here and let's get back to the video. Okay, so setting this up, like I mentioned, is a little bit tedious, but it's not too difficult. Um, basically, you just kind of want to add in some text objects and select the font you want to use. In this case, I'm using Roboto Bold. Um, and then I did also use a couple little image textures here to add the Blender logo and the Dirk logo to those keys right there. Yeah, you can use, so you can basically like add in a text object and you can just basically like, you know, type the letters, literally just hold on your keyboard and slide your finger across. And then you can use the character spacing here to try to get it to line up with, you know, with the, the keyboard layout that you just created. Sometimes that can be a little funky if you're not using like a mono space font. Uh, the kerning can be a little odd, and I did experience that. So um, one way I was able to get a little bit more control over spacing was actually using these curve objects. So this is just a straight line curve object that I just used to sort of get the letters positioned properly. Um, now I use some different size fonts in uh, different parts of the keyboard to kind of just make it look nice. I didn't spend a ton of time on this, but this is a little bit tedious. Um, I will put this texture full screen uh, if you want to use that. Just be wary that, you know, obviously whatever texture you make with these letters needs to align to the keyboard layout that you created in that previous step. So we should be all good in this case to actually turn this into a texture that you can use. Um, for one, you'd want to hide your keys. And then in my world settings, I just have this as a, um, a white background with strength one. 
and then the material for these keys is just a black material so i just disconnected essentially the all the inputs so we just have this black now to get it to render a perfect black and white uh, you can turn your view transform to standard and just have no look and then you can just render it out using a um, you just add in a camera alt r alt g just kind of pull it up and then make that a orthographic camera so you don't get any perspective and you just need to maybe adjust your scale until you got it right and then just save it as a relatively high resolution image it doesn't necessarily have to be square but square is usually easier to work with with textures so i did 2048 square and then i rendered it 200 percent. so that's actually a 4k texture um, and an EV that would render super fast. So basically now I have my texture. So didn't want to walk through the whole process of creating the whole thing because it's a little tedious, but uh, let me know in the comments if you do have questions. It's relatively straightforward. And of course, if you want, you can just uh, screenshot this right now and use the exact same one. I would save that and we will go ahead and move on to the next step. So we'll actually apply that texture later. Uh, I want to go ahead and get into the modeling, but for now we can move this empty object into a new collection, which I will call the trash collection. So new collection trash, and that's just going to be where I kind of save copies of objects that I'm not currently working with. Um, so we've got our keyboard texture there. Uh, what we need to do now is go ahead and just uh, start creating the body of the laptop around it. So I'm going to press shift a, add in a plane, and then uh, in edit mode, I'm gonna go ahead and press control R to add an edge loop, delete one half of this, and then I'm gonna add in a mirror modifier uh, because what we're doing here is gonna be pretty much symmetrical. So I'll also turn this clipping on and move this plane over. And now would be a time to think about kind of how big you want your screen to be because the screen is basically gonna be the same size as the, as the base. So if you're going for a particular aspect ratio, that would be something to consider. Uh, but I'm just going to kind of eyeball it here. You know, I want a little bit of space for kind of a trackpad down here and, you know, maybe some additional like speakers or something up here. Um, but I think something like this is going to look pretty good for me. I think I'll probably leave it right about there. I think that looks like a good screen size when we mirror that to create the other part. Um, but now I just want to start kind of cutting into this and making that shape. So I'm going to press Control R and add an edge loop and just bring that over to right there, getting it pretty tight up against the keys, and then do the same thing right here and here. And then I'm gonna take this whole thing and just press E and Z. Uh, it's It probably was going on the normals right there, so should have been straight down, but just to be sure it's going straight down, E and then Z, um, just till I have a good thickness, something like that I think is gonna be fine to start with. We'll probably add a little taper and things like that, but um, I think that's looking good for now. Um, so let's go ahead and so we avoid these annoying doubles let's extrude down this portion so let's press e and again that's going to go straight down we can kind of check our depth there we want to leave a little bit of space because we're going to add a little bit of an underglow to that i think but um i think that that's looking pretty good and now that that is in good shape i want to you can go for whatever style you want here really like you could follow some of the same techniques we did in the phone tutorial to um, you know just add some simple bevels if you want to go for a more rectangular shape but uh, i'm going to give it up a little bit of a notch from that we're going to do a subdivision surface modifier which is going to start breaking things but allow us to create a little bit more of an organic shape similar to some popular laptops from a fruit company you've maybe seen before um, but yeah using subdivision surface is going to smooth that out allow me to create some more organic forms which i think will look good um, now that does create some problems. Uh, let's go ahead and press F2 and rename this to LT Base for a laptop base or whatever the heck you want to call it. And I'm going to hide the keyboard. Let's go ahead and rename that keyboard. And let's just hide it real quick um, so you can see that the subdivision surface has smoothed that area out way more than we want it to. Um, so we can control what's being smoothed by adding in some creases. So we've got all those bottom edges selected there. Let's, uh, we actually don't really need this edge, but let's add in a crease right there, which will sharpen that up. And then let's also add the crease around the outside right here. So selecting these edges, add in the crease. And then on the corners, we also need to do a little bit of creasing so that we have a nice sharp cutout still right there. Now you might run into some issues like we've got here where 
um, it's still kind of you know, trying to round over. You might need to add in some additional creases. I'm going to be adding in a few more edge loops though, so I might handle that in just a minute. Um, but I think that this is looking decent. We've got that cut out. Now let's add in another cutout for the trackpad. So I want the bottom of it to be maybe right around there. I'm going to leave some space right here to create sort of a little thumb pull where when the laptop's closed, you've got a place to grab it from. And I don't want it all the way against the keyboard, so I might add in one more edge loop right here as well. Um, track peg and end right, maybe right there. Looks pretty good. And let's just add an edge loop right here to set the width of our trackpad, touchpad, whatever you call it. And that looks good. So let's press E, and then we'll just go straight down with this one until we have a little bit of a recess there. And let's add in our creases again to the same areas we did previously on the recess for the keys. So adding in some creases, making sure we get the right edges, turn that all the way up and looking pretty good. Now we are gonna, let's maybe just go ahead and add in a crease right there and maybe one right there for good measure. We should be in pretty good shape. Now that's looking good. We can bring back our keyboard portion and I guess we'll go ahead and add in the trackpad. I'm just going to select this face, press shift D to duplicate it, P to separate by selection. And I just, I'll probably just disable the subdivision and just because that's a rectangular object and I could add my thickness. Let's just add it with a solidify, solidify modifier, and then just pull the thickness up until it's kind of wherever you want. Maybe, it's slightly below the surface, something like that. Um, but yeah, personal preference right there. I think that looks good. And maybe we'll add just a little bit of bevel to it. Uh, we can bring the value down on that. So it's really subtle and something like that will look good. And we can leave that shaded flat. Uh, the body though, we will shade smooth. So we can do that there. And yeah, we're gonna be, we need to add in some more edge loops to kind of control this. We can also turn on our auto smooth option which angles sharper than that should get sharp. They should be sharp. That's how auto smooth works, something like that. So yeah, this shape is totally fine, working okay, but I wanna add in a few more details. Um, for one, we are going to, let's add in that little thumb area. So I might just add an edge loop right here. Um, that looks good. And then I'm going to, I think what I'll do is, hmm, I probably want it to come to like right there or so. I'm gonna select these two faces and then press I to inset it. And then if I press B, it should stick to the edge there where I had the mirror modifier. Um, so that, something like that. And then I'm just gonna delete them. And then let's extrude this back down and connect it and fill this face back in. And yeah, that'll kind of give us our little thumbprint. Now to start giving this a little bit less of a rounded form, a little more polish i'm going to add in a bevel modifier to kind of control we don't want to just use the creases because we don't want them super sharp we kind of want them still rounded but just tighten things up a little bit so again i'm gonna do that with a bevel modifier let's add that now and i want to define exactly where that bevel happens so the limit method i'm going to set to be weight and then let's make this before the subdivision service modifier so that um you know that that's taken into account and we kind of get those sharp edges so now because we set this to weight, nothing's happening, we need to define where exactly we want that bevel. And where I want it, for example, is going to be all the way around the outside here. So I'm just holding control and selecting some edges and all the way over there. And let's take the bevel weight, drag it up to one. And now we have way too big of a bevel. So <laughs> let's, uh, let's pull that down, something pretty small. And we can add in a couple more segments here. That'll make it really sharp. Yeah, that's looking pretty good, something like that. And what do we want to do with the bubble over here? Let's um, we just have it kind of follow all the way around right there. Let's take a look at that. That's looking good. It's a little bit too uh, scalloped for me, so I might add in another edge loop. And I don't want this kind of angle following right there, so I'm going to press S, X, and 0 just to kind of flatten that all out and pull that over to somewhere right there. And that's looking pretty good. Now maybe we make this... Maybe we make this a little bit taller, something like that. We'll look good. Cool, cool, cool. We'll leave that at that. Uh, now we do need to create a little bit of a spot back here where the um, screen can kind of like latch onto. 
Uh, so maybe we add in an edge loop right there. And then let's just select these faces, pull them out. Now we're gonna have to sort of rework our bevel a little bit here. Let's get rid of it right there, turn that down, add it back in right here. And those still have the bevel weight looking good, looking good. Now maybe to sharpen this edge up, we just pull another edge loop right there. And you know, honestly, this is getting down to design decisions. Uh, that looks a little too childish. Maybe we just add another edge loop right here. Don't worry about adding too many edge loops, but you know, use them sparingly, I guess. Uh, but that 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 should look pretty good. If we wanted to, we could even like inset that face, turn off the bevel weight, make it more square. Eh, I don't think we really need to do that. Uh, we're not really gonna see that part too much anyway, so we should be good. Um, but this is looking pretty good for the base. I would say that maybe the next thing I wanna do is consider giving it a little bit of a tilt so that the whole thing kind of slopes a little bit. And rather than this kind of boring rectangle shape, we get a little bit more interest happening. Um, so let's do that by tilting it. Now we wanna tilt the whole thing, but we kind of want to be able to go back to the tilt in case we do any modeling where we want it to be flat. So I'm going to add in an empty, and this will be sort of a controller for the whole laptop. So let's select the keyboard, the trackpad, the base, and that, and control P with empty selected last, keep transform, and then let's just rotate this. Um, I think something like a two degree tilt is going to be pretty good. So let's rotate that like that. And then just kind of bring this up till it's sort of sitting on the green line, the y-axis there. That'll probably be about what my floor is. And then I want to sort of flatten this bottom out. So um, I'm going to do that first by circle selecting the bottom, all these parts right here, and then go into my shear tool. And then I'm just going to eyeball sort of it being flat. And I think I'm pretty close right there. That's looking good. And then I'm just going to press S, Z, and 0, and that should make it perfectly flat. Um, and then we can pull the whole thing up until it's kind of sitting on our floor right there. And that's looking pretty good. And now we've got a nice little tilt, and if we need to um, like be modeling on the surface flat, we can just set that back to uh, 0. But knowing that you know, to really sit flat on the floor right now, it's going to be at a 2 degree tilt. Um, but that's looking great. So what we could do from here is just a little more shaping up of the whole thing. You know, maybe we kind of go into our front view and give this a little bit of a, you know, stealthy, stealthy edge right there. That's looking cool. We could do the same thing on the front. Uh, maybe just kind of come in here, pull this back, maybe pull this edge back too to make that nice and around. And then take this and kind of pull it over so we don't get too much weird shading up there. That's not too bad, looking good. And yeah, I think that's, uh, that's about all I want to do. Um, you know, we could add in some hyper mega scroll bars or something right here, which I think would be cool. Just rip that. Just a little, uh, you know, a little extra detail for the, for the kids in the back. Now, I want to make this whole thing a little bit wider. Okay, so now this is where you might run into a problem if you forgot that you tilted it. If you just tried to put this on the y-axis, it's going to go straight out, but it needs to go down at that angle. So we can do G, Y, Y, and that will do it on the local axis. So I can kind of pull this down just to make that trackpad a little bigger. Um, now I'm going to deselect these bottom ones so I don't run into the other part, but G, Y, Y, and just pull that back a little bit. Now, mind you, I'm in edit mode on both of these objects right now. Um, okay, cool. So that looks pretty good for our base. Let's, um, you know, now could also be when you go in and add some little like feet, or something like that. <laughs> Those look pretty bad. I might handle details like that in a separate video or something, but um, this is, I think, looking pretty good. Uh, we'll probably go in and add some little ports or something here really quick, but let's go ahead and get the screen portion handled. So because we use a subdivision surface, these points right here are sort of defining what this curve is. And we want that curve to match on our screen object. So uh, we kind of need to like retain those. So what I'm gonna do is select this one, this one, this one, this one, um, keep those, that's all good. And then let's also just select the same on this side. And for good measure, we can just grab that one too. Uh, let's press Shift D to duplicate those. So it's kind of a bounding box for what our screen will be. 
I'll now press P to separate by selection. And let's go ahead and press F2 and rename that screen. And I don't think this got renamed, but let's do um, touch pad. Okay, so grabbing the screen object, we just need to kind of fill this all in now. So uh, let's select that edge, bring it all the way over. These two can just get connected by pressing F. And then we sort of need to grid fill this whole thing. Um, but I'm gonna do that by, let's just select all these, oops. Select this, 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 this. I extrude that over and fill these in. Da -da. And let's do the same thing. Pull this all over right there. Just making sure we have like a decent edge flow here where the edges go all the way. And it looks like we need to add one more point right here. Let's pull this over and fill this in. And then I think we can go all the way over. Let's just delete this, take this whole edge, and then boom, bring it over till it slides right into place. And let's just turn the bubble weight down to zero and we'll reapply it in a little bit. Okay, so as you can see from our gorgeous intersecting faces there, we are right on the money. This laptop is sealed. Let's take the whole thing and press E and we'll go up on the normals. What do I got there? I got some faces on the inside or something. We might just need to recalculate our normals. Okay, so I went up with that. Now that did go on the normal, so the two degree thing. Let's just, while we're doing the screen, let's uh, let's set that back to be flat. Okay, I want to press A to select everything. Shift N, recalculating the normals. Looks like I fixed our issues. Um, now for this bottom, let's go ahead and go around the outside and select these faces. Actually, we should probably, let's do this little part first. This, let's do SX zero. Make sure that's all straight across. Let's pull that over to right there. Let's take this bottom face and just extrude this down a little bit until we have sort of the part that will hold the screen. And then let's add in some edge loops. So pull in there, pull in right there. Probably got a little intersection, but hey, it's all right. Not really gonna see it. Uh, that looks good. And now let's add in our bevel. So I think we want to just select this whole bottom area. Just holding control, clicking, going around the outside until I've got everything selected. Bevel weight to one. And you can see that now our curves are all pretty well lined up. If you did want to make some changes to the curves, um, you could just go into edit mode on both of these objects. And then, you know, theoretically, then they should should stay lined up. You know, of course, in this case, we have some extra geometry down there, so that would need to be mirrored onto the top, but all good. I think we've got a, a decent shape there. Now, this bevel is being a little bit funky. Maybe we need to, maybe let's remove the bevel right there and have it come down this edge instead. Would that work okay? Um, now, I do kind of want to see what this looks like on the inside, so uh, let's go into our side view and change our origin to right there so when we rotate it it will rotate about there so i'm going to go into this tool tab and then effect only origins and then just kind of move this to where i want that to rotate from so somewhere about right there is going to be good and then make sure you uncheck that to avoid some headaches in the future and now we can open our laptop for the first time. Uh, I'm just gonna, to be able to toggle between those, I'm gonna insert some keyframes. So we're looking at the X rotation. So insert a single keyframe on frame one, and then any other frame, I'll do frame 30. I'll just rotate that to an open state, something like 110 degrees looks good. Uh, let's make sure this is flat. So I'm gonna do S, Y, Y, zero. Okay, good. And then maybe just kind of pull that down and then maybe add one more edge loop for good measure right there. Now we want to be thinking a little bit about where these edge loops are because we will make the screen based on this. So maybe the screen, maybe this will be the bottom corner of the screen. Now we can move these ones over a little bit so that we have a thinner bezel on the side. I think that looks good. We just need to make sure we leave a rectangle. We want these corner ones to be in the same place because those are what control the curve that matches up down here. Um, but these ones that are in a little bit should not mess with the curve too much. So that looks good. And this will be our screen. So we can, what should we do now? Let's, um, let's press E to just drop that in ever so slightly. 
maybe something like that. And then we need to add in creases again, like we did before here. So let's get that whole edge, that whole edge, that whole edge, this little guy, and then let's get this little guy, this whole edge, this whole edge, and turn the crease up to one. And we're gonna need to add a little control creases here. Okay, looks like our subdivision's good. And now we've got our cute little indentation for the screen. Now let's check our intersection. I bet this kind of it hits it a little bit, not too bad. Uh, you could work with your shape here a little bit to avoid that. You know, maybe kind of pull that in a tad. That could be cool, that could be gamery. Oh yeah, now we've got sort of a weird detail there, but I guess I don't hate it. Let's pull this in, make it nice and thin. This is a high-tech laptop, so I mean, you know, you can make things as thin as you want. That looks great. What happened here? Oh, I forgot to... Actually, that's fine, honestly. Who cares? We'll just make it all curvy looking. Now I'm definitely messing up my... Oh gosh. Let's select this all. Let's do S, Y, 0. Flatten that back out. Why did we even pull that in? Oh yeah, so it didn't intersect. Uh, let's shade that smooth for one thing. Let's just maybe thin out our screen a little bit. Make it look a little more modern. A little more hardcore. Let's do our tilt here. Again, 2 degrees. And then... What do we want to do? Maybe we just bring GZZ, bring this whole thing down a little bit, and maybe this one down GZZ even more. Get you that nice thin look you paid for. Oh yeah, nice little curve there. Maybe this can come down too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's looking real good on account of the curves. That's my Fargo voice. Okay, got the laptop looking super duper dope. You could add in, you know, some alligator details, some Python vibes. Python, not like what they code Blender with, but like, ah, aggression, aggression detail. Kind of vibing with that, not gonna lie. <sighs> Should we leave it on there? Or is that really stupid? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what, it's like a tray eat your burger on that put some ketchup in there that's actually kind of my vibe you could like should we like move these in oops do 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 oh my gosh oh my god wow this thing is getting wild watch out hide your kids hide your wife all right i don't want to mess that up too much i really actually don't love that but I'm kind of stuck with it now because i didn't make a copy for my trash collection i don't think it needs jets i don't think it needs jet pack all right all right all right I'm done. We'll leave it at that. Hopefully it doesn't cause some type of massive unforeseen problem for us. So we have our organic detail Extremo super duper laptop, which now do we need to add a detail on the bottom? Do we, do we need to add a detail on the bottom? Maybe this is where the battery pack goes or something. I didn't want to do all this. I did not. Let's go up a little bit with it. Just some little details on the bottom in case we flip her over, which at some point we probably will. Make sure to save if you haven't been saving. And uh, I guess let's just do a real quick, add some ports onto here. Uh, I'm just gonna add in a plane. Let's bring it over here, RY90. I'm gonna do this relatively quickly. We covered this in the cell phone tutorial. But I'm gonna add in a bevel. We'll do vertices and we'll scale this down till it is port size, something like that, SY. We'll do a long port to start. Add in several segments, something like that is good. And then I'll scale down maybe more, SY. And let's do, let's have that one go right there. Let's do another port, SY. This will be like some little USB-Cs, something like that. Eyeballing it. Okay, uh, let's take that and then let's add in a solidify and give it some thickness so it can go into the laptop just like that. Probably doesn't need to go quite that far. Let's pull that back a tad. Great, great, great. Now let's use this as a Boolean object. So let's add in a Boolean modifier, Boolean, and let's select this object. And it's hard to tell if it's working because this object is in the way. So let's change the viewport display to display as bounds and you can see that it is working. You might need to move this around, up or down, 
or adjust your geometry on this object. If you're getting some errors, the Boolean can be a little tricky, um, but I think that works pretty good. Let's duplicate this bottom and move it to the trash collection uh, because what I want to do now is apply this Boolean modifier. So let's, um, well, no, we don't want to apply it. We, we don't need to apply it. Let's, let's just add in some other little details to those ports real quick. Uh, let's duplicate this object and then change it from, let's just pull it back to the full viewport display. And then the bounds one we can move to the trash. Let's just make sure that that's parented to this in case we move the laptop around or like when we mess with this thing. Yeah, like that's not parented. So we need to make sure this is also parented. Control P, keep transform. Okay, so this one, let's name it um, bool cut and let's move it to the trash collection. Now this one, let's apply the modifiers and then let's delete these faces on the ends, X faces. Let's remove doubles, right click merge vertices by distance um, because the bevel when it runs into itself can create doubles. Let's add a little bit of a solidify. Let's uh, bring the thickness down a little bit and let's push it in. These are just some like little guards. Um, and then we could add just like a really slight bevel to this. This might look nice once we add like a, a chrome material or something. 0 0.01, 0 0.001, there we go. And we could shade it smooth, auto smooth. And let's just do our little, uh, let's just do our little trick with the shear to kind of get this back into the right angle roughly. It's okay if they poke out a little bit. Yeah, looks cool if they poke out a little bit. Cool, now we just got some detail and we could even add in like a um, another detail, shift D, just so that these have some dimension. And maybe we just like select these front edges and extrude them up so they're a little thicker. Great, beautiful ports. I like those ports. Let's save again. God, I'm really starting to not like this, but um, I don't do it for me, I do it for you. I just wanna give you the creative ideas so that you can excel in life, whether or not your laptop has weird lines on it. All right, we've done enough with the modeling. Let's save this and start a little bit of materials. Should be pretty simple. I'm just gonna drag it out a viewport here. Let's go into the rendered view here. Now I am rendering in Cycles, my favorite render engine. And let's pull up a shader tab right here. So first, let's just add in a plane. And we'll make this the ground. Do we have our little two degree rotation? We do. Um, so this is a ground. Let's add in a light, area light, bring it up. And let's make our world dark and black. And let's just start with kind of one area light right now, something like this. And we can turn the power up on it. Now the power of this is gonna depend on the scale of your scene. Uh, my scene is way bigger than it should be. So it's looking, yeah, the values are gonna be a little different. We can turn up our overlays here. Let's open this puppy back up. Oh yeah, gorgeous. So it's very plain, it's very white right now. Let's add a material to the body. I'll call that body. And I will make it a black material. You can do whatever you want at this point. Well, I'm going to make it metallic too. And maybe kind of shiny. Maybe we do a little bit of a gray tone there. Looking very nice. And let's use that same body material as the basis for our trackpad. But let's call it trackpad. And maybe this one is a, uh, maybe this one's not metal. And it is rougher. Maybe this can be not metal and shinier and blacker. Mm, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how that looks. We'll stick with that for now. Uh, let's make this the body material. That would be the rest of the laptop. And we need to do a little bit of maintenance here with the screen situation. So let's add in a new material. I'm going to call this screen and I'm going to select these faces and assign the screen material to them. Let's turn on auto smooth, which I have that as a quick favorite, but that option is down here. Um, okay, so the screen is looking good. Now for the screen, um, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna add in another piece here that's actual glass, I think would be a little bit more realistic. So let's, for the screen, what I like to do is add in Let's just add in our texture, which I don't know if we made a duplicate of this, but let's shift D to duplicate this, move it to the trash collection. And then this one, I will apply the mirror modifier because I wanted to add a texture. So yeah, we've got the mirror modifier applied. 
let's select the whole screen area. And then because it's a rectangle and it's just got regular edges, we're just gonna press U and unwrap. Uh, this might not make sense until we add an image texture. Let's press Control T if you have your Node Wrangler add-on enabled. And then we will navigate to an image texture. Now I made a really dumb, simple image texture of unknown aspect ratio. That should work fine on here. And let's go to our UV image editor and then just get that into place. Now it looks like it might be stretched sort of weird. Let's do U unwrap again now that we have the texture. Sometimes if you unwrap it with a texture plugged in, uh, it will do better with the aspect ratio. And it looks like my image is pretty good. My image was a two by three aspect ratio. Um, so you might need to kind of adjust and it's, you know, it's not fully filling there, but that looks good. Um, so I don't want this to be principled. Well, we can have it be principled, but let's plug the color into the emission, emission color, and then the strength we can set to one or higher. And then what I like to do is I don't actually mind the roughness being really whatever, but I'm going to change this to a black. So we just kind of have unadulterated color there. And you can play with the roughness. You can kind of see the effect there. But I'm going to add um, some glass in front of this. And I have got to get rid of this white keyboard. Let's just do keys. It's driving me crazy. It's ruining my black vibes. And also, this should be black too. It's all black. We're going gamer. We're going gamer. Now that I feel better about that, let's add in a glass screen. Um, so I'm going to select, let's just grab the vertices because this really just needs to be a rectangle. Grab those, and I guess we'll grab these ones too. That and that. Let's do Shift D, P to separate by selection. Now we have to find that, which is right there. Make it a face. Don't need subdivision. Don't need bevel. Do need solidify. Um, let's get rid of all the creases. Shouldn't really matter. So we're just gonna shade this puppy flat. Now, also this has some animation on there, which we need to get rid of that inherited from the screen. So I'm going to clear these keyframes and then I'm just going to parent this to the screen. Control P, keep transform, which now this has a really weird angle. Um, that's probably fine though. Um, let's just move it. Let's try G, Z, Z. Should move it out. Yeah, I just don't want it intersecting. So G, Z, Z, move it out a tad. And we can give this like Maybe just a tad more thickness the other way. And this will be a glass material. So let's um, delete this material and let's call it screen glass. So we know that's not the screen. Roughness zero, transmission one, color bright white. Now this should be a little bit better. Like if we you know, look at the reflection of our lamp, for example, it should be in there somewhere. Well, we can see the reflection of the, let's add in another light. There's my reflection. That's what I was looking for. Anyways, let's get to that key texture. Jeez, we really put it off. How are we can do that? Keys, same way as before. Control T, image texture, open. Let's save the one that I saved. Texture, KB1. Uh, it is not mapped properly. Now, I'll have you note, we are at an angle here. Let's get that flattened out first. Let's go into our top view seven. Tab in edit mode, you project from view and just align it. It'd be pretty easy if you used your model as the reference for making the thing. So I'm just looking at the Q and the P right now. It's kind of getting those lined up centered and double checking everything else around it. Looking proper, looking at the backspace and the control now to see that those are centered. And it looks like we're pretty good right there. I'll leave it at that. And now my horrible white keyboard is back. So um, I actually, one of the reasons I made that texture perfect black and white was so I could just use it as an input. So I'm going to press shift A and add in a color, mix color, and I'm going to use it to influence this. So the way this works is that zero factor is the first color, one factor is the second color. And because I have a black and white image, the black corresponds to a value of zero. Um, so right now the black areas are red and the white areas are this ugly gray color, which I'm going to turn back to a black and the keys I do want to have be a white. Now I mentioned some underglow earlier. How can we add that? Well, we need to use the same texture to influence the transparency of these keys. So let's just, um, let's rotate this at a weird angle so we can just kind of see what we're doing. Uh, we can just press Alt R to get it back. 
don't worry. Uh, R twice to rotate that to a weird angle. Um, so for one thing, these keys are solid and I don't really, mm, I don't want them to go all the way through like that. So I'm going to apply, oh God, when you make a duplicate, duplicate, move it to trash collection. I'm gonna apply the bevel and the solidify. And then let's do our Alt R to reset that. And I'm gonna select all these bottom faces, box select and X delete faces so that now they are thin like that. Now I could add a solidify modifier to give them some actual thickness, but no big deal. Let's use this same texture to control the transmission value. So we need to drop this down. I hate that with the new principal shader. We need to plug this color into the weight. A transmission value of one, which corresponds to a value of white, is fully transmissive. Zero is not transmissive. So we want fully transmissive to be the black areas. So let's plug this in, but then do color invert color. So it's the other way around. So now the key, the little letters are transparent and the keys are not transparent and they have that black color. Press Alt R to reset that. And this is not at our two degree, which is great. I'm gonna add in just a big fat plane right here. And we're gonna use that as our underglow. And let's make sure that that is parented to this. Control P for when we move it later. And let's try to get that object selected again. Oh God, I keep missing it. Okay, F2 underglow. And we'll just make that a new material. Um, we'll make it a shader emission and drop it right there. And we can just bump this puppy up. It's too low. It's not in our cavity. We need to move this up till it's right there. Boom, there goes the lights. Now it does not need to be that strong. It could be a pretty low value. Um, this could also be a texture. It could be a video. It could literally be the, the texture of the image right there. That's looking kind of wild. You could like spin it around and then do different patterns and stuff. That looks kind of cool, but I'm boring. I'm lame. I'm going to make it just a little bit of a blue color. Mm, something like that looks good. And maybe we make it a little bit brighter. Now we can take these lamps and move them into our LCA collection, new collection, LCA, which is lights, camera, action, and now we have, I just tried to go into camera view, but I don't have a camera. We've got a vibe. We have an official vibe. We've got a glowing keyboard, a glowing screen, and all in all, we're feeling pretty good. Let's see if we can make those ports glow just a little bit. Watch this. I'm just going to like kind of drag. So we can just do, let's shift D and just move this right there. Just making another little emission zone. And where is this? We need to align it with the angles. Oh yeah. Now the ports glow. Gotta love that. Okay. Anyways, let's get our little, uh, two degrees back here. Ba -dum -ba -dum. Great. Oh yeah. I mean, look at that. The ports glow, dude. That is sick. All right. Enough of that. Um, let's just kind of speed forward here. Let's save that file. Maybe we just add in a cube and we make this the ground material, link materials and make like a little, make a little environment for our stuff here. LCA. That's great. That's gorgeous. Um, let's add in a camera and let's just find a nice angle. Control numpad zero, shift tilde, fly out. And you know, the default 50 looks okay here. Maybe we do like a hundred and let's find a nice angle where we can really see that puppy shine. Something like this, maybe. Bye. Thanks for liking and subscribing. I sure hope you did. Let's just add in some more miscellaneous cubes to increase the vibes. Cubes tend to do that. Um, but yeah, for real, I hope you like this one. Like and subscribe. Um, I'll probably do some more things to this model. I'll make it even cooler one way or another. Maybe we'll even do a little animation or something. Um, I have no idea, but play with this as much as you want. Get it looking cool, get it looking sick. Um, as far as rendering this out, you shouldn't need too many samples. Um, 600, uh, if you really wanna make it a vibe, you can change, for one, this should be AGX. That's a new one, it's supposed to look better. Um, you can do high contrast, that'll be super vibey. Um, you can pull the spread down on this even lower, pull the power up on this light even more. Whoa, don't get too cool on me, Derek. Don't get too cool. Cool it down a little bit. Uh, roughness, maybe this is a little more rough. I didn't add really advanced materials to this at all because eh, I've kind of covered that stuff in a lot of other tutorials, so you can check those out. But yeah, just vibe with it. F12 that puppy.
300 samples with denoising should be totally enough and it should look pretty good depending on how uh, much she did oh we didn't add like a little chrome material i'll do that there later but um yeah the ports are glowing the vibes are flowing the subscribing button is what you're pressing right now make sure you tag me on instagram and uh, wherever else you share stuff i'd love to see what you come up with uh, but yeah this was a fun one just kind of speed-ish modeling a laptop thing and yeah, i think it turned out pretty good hopefully you like yours too share it with me would love to see it yeah i guess i'll uh, like and subscribe i'll see you next time i'll talk to you later peace out homies